So the Miami Marlins are making some moves, making some signings, trying to get better. Awesome for them. Could they actually surprise some people and maybe compete in 2020? No, 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 no. And he drives it into right center field, hit a ton. This baby is way back. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. And today, we're going to talk a little Miami Marlins. You can see I got my Marlins jersey hanging up here. So we're going to talk some Marlins who are making some moves, making some signings. So we're going to try to catch up on some of the signings they've made and look at their team and do a little 2020 preview for the Marlins. So the Miami Marlins have signed relief pitcher Jimmy Garcia from the Dodgers. Garcia was 1-4 with a 3.61 ERA with the Dodgers in 2019, but he had 66 strikeouts and 62.1 innings and only gave up 40 hits, which is pretty good. And they're getting Garcia for $1.1 million, so a pretty nice contract for the Marlins, and it is the most money that Garcia's ever made, so I'm sure he's happy as well. So a nice bullpen piece there for Miami. And Garcia is not the only pickup that the Marlins have made this offseason. They've been making a little move here and a little move there, trying to get their team a little bit better. I don't think they're anywhere near ready to compete for anything, but they are going to be slightly better than last year, I think. Earlier in the offseason, they also picked up Jesus Aguilar off waivers from the Rays, and he is a former Brewer. You might remember him. He's the one that got kicked in the leg by Manny Machado in that playoff game when he was playing first base for the Brewers in that kind of... Um, controversial little kick shall we say that was pretty bush league but whatever Aguilar is coming off a tough year and that's how they were probably able to get him but he remember in 2018 he really tore it up for the Brewers that year he hit 35 home runs 274 average 352 on base and he made the all-star team so you know the Marlins are hoping that Jesus Aguilar has a little return to form, figures out what he was doing in 2018, and repeats that in 2020 for them, is they are going to put him over at first base. And then over at third, they picked up Jonathan Villar, another pretty good player coming off of a really good year in fact he's coming off of a 2019 season where he didn't miss a game he played 162 games that year during that time he smacks 24 home runs has a 339 on base 274 batting average so that has to be considered an upgrade for the marlins to get a really solid player there and jonathan vr another signing that i haven't talked about yet matt kemp so they signed matt kemp to actually a minor league deal but Matt Kemp, who when I heard that, I thought Matt Kemp is not retired yet. Matt Kemp is still around. It feels like Matt Kemp has been around forever. It actually, I looked it up and he has been around for a long time. Back 2006 was his first year. So Matt Kemp is going to be on a minor league deal. But he's actually not as old as I thought. I'm thinking he's got to be pushing 40. He's actually only 35. But I think nowadays 35 uh, is like what used to be 40. I really believe that back in the 80s and 90s, someone who was 35 was just a little bit older, but they were still, you know, no, not a problem. Someone who was 30 was in their prime. 30, you were in your absolute prime. You were freaking, you know, 100% ready to rock and roll. 35, a little bit older. 40, okay, you're getting, you, you need to go ahead and start thinking about retirement. Nowadays, 30 is getting a little bit old. 35 you're getting ready for retirement. You're, you're pretty much done. 40 is almost unheard of. But Matt Kemp actually is not too far removed from a pretty solid season. Just go back to 2018 with the Dodgers. And that year, Matt Kemp hit 290, 21 home runs, 85 RBIs, had a 338 on base percentage. I mean, obviously, he was very solid for the Dodgers that year, and it was a little bit of a surprise. And now we're coming off, you know, two years later, coming off a year with the Reds where he only had about 60 at-bats, and he didn't do much. He hit a home run, had about 12 hits. So Matt Kemp, you know, coming off a tough year, 35 years old. Marlins figured, why not? Minor league deal, low risk. Give this guy a shot to make the team. If he can get in the outfield and he can help them and he – you know, comes out strong. Maybe he won't last the whole year without getting hurt or without having a major decline. But hey, if he can get in there and help them get off to a good start, win some games, hey, they'll take it. So Matt Kemp with the Marlins on a minor league deal, chance to make the team, chance to prolong his career. Awesome for him. And hopefully he makes the team and does well there for the Marlins. All in all, when you take a look at their whole team, though, obviously they're just not quite ready to win anything. I mean, I think it's pretty clear. I think Marlins fans would even admit that, but they are at least trying to make the team better. 
Taking a look at their depth chart, we got their outfield, Harold Ramirez. That's a nice young prospect, and uh, he's coming off his first year, so hopefully he'll have uh, another you know, good season. It wasn't bad. Uh, Brian Anderson, he hit 20 home runs for them. In center field, I'm not sure who they have there as the starter, but I see Lewis Brinson is one of their big prospects, and he is actually the guy they picked up in the Christian Yellick deal. So I think the Marlins really want this guy to work out because they gave up Christian Yellick for him and a few others. But Lewis Brinson... Does pretty well in AAA, but so far at the big league level, he hasn't really shown that he's going to be a solid big leaguer. Moving to the infield, obviously we talked about the corners. They're looking solid. Miguel Rojas over there at short is a really solid hitter. Isan Diaz is a second baseman who is up and coming. He had a fabulous year in the minor leagues with the New Orleans Baby Cakes. Yes, the Baby Cakes. Take a look at their logo. That is pretty scary. So the New Orleans Baby Cakes, they were the AAA affiliate of the Marlins in 2019. And there, Isan Diaz hit 26 home runs with a 305 batting average. So obviously the guy has pop. He just needs to translate that to the big leagues. And if he can do that, if he can translate some of that power, some of that hitting ability to the big leagues, well, that would be another solid player. But he has not done so just yet. So the Marlins, no, not bad, not horrible, nothing great. They don't have any real superstars out there, but they got a, some decent players and some decent prospects. But their rotation, you can see right there, not a lot of familiar names. Sandy Alcantara is their supposed ace right now, and he was 6-14. and 14, So, you know, if that's your ace, I don't know. Bullpen, again, they've improved a little bit with this signing, but I can't say this is a, a winning team right here. Bullpen, you know, with Drew Steckenrider is your closer. Oh, man. So, yeah, the Marlins have a long way to go. There's no doubt about it. I didn't mention their catcher, by the way, Jorge Alfaro, and he is he's a decent hitter. I think he hit about 17, 18 home runs in 2019, so that is going to be all right for them. But overall, the Marlins are clearly a team that have a lot of work to do, a lot of improvements to do, and they're slowly improving the team right here. I'm wondering how Marlins fans feel about some of these moves I don't know. Marlins fans have been frustrated for a lot of years. Obviously, you know, Derek Jeter comes in, takes over the team, trades off everybody, all their stars out the door and uh, trying to rebuild from there. And a lot of these prospects, you know, hopefully there's some real good prospects coming up from the lower minor leagues because right now this team on paper, definitely not ready to win, but they are trying to make some moves to at least make the team a little more watchable. Maybe they'll win a few more games and uh, things like that. So we'll see how it works out for the Marlins. Thanks again, everybody, for joining me. Have a fantastic day. Check the links in the description below. I got a link to all my accounts. Also, I got a Patreon page. Going to be updating that constantly, giving out awards, giving out special benefits to those who join. Check out the link to that in the description. Help me grow this channel. Help me grow this brand. Hum, baby baseball. We're going to be talking baseball all offseason long, getting ready for 2020, talking Giants, talking everything here, talking Marlins right here on the Hum Baby Baseball channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up, and I'll see you later. See ya! When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are down, it's bye-bye, baby. History's in the making at Oracle.